try and initiate a traffic stop on that suspect vehicle. Um, it began to pull over, um, then as officers were about to exit and approach the vehicle, it rapidly left the area, um, going through a red light, actually at uh, 17th and Washington. The officers, um, those officers uh, followed the vehicle and then uh, several other officers went to that immediate area to try and again locate the vehicle. And just within a couple of minutes, the vehicle was located again at 12th and Liberty Avenue. Um, officers followed the vehicle for a few blocks and two officers stopped the vehicle in the 700 block of 8th Street. Before the officers were able to exit their vehicle, the suspect exited the driver's door of the vehicle and advanced on the officers, withdrawing a handgun and firing at the officers in their vehicles. The officers exited their vehicles and uh, two of the vehicles were struck by the gunfire. The officer who, had, who was in front and had initiated the stop withdrew his uh, service pistol and returned fire um, towards Lopez. Lopez was struck by the gunfire from the officer and was later located on the ground in front of his vehicle. Another individual had fled from the vehicle from the passenger door during the initial traffic stop. That individual has not been located at this time. Um, most of this had taken place between the time of the original call just before 1.30 and about 1.37. It was a short period of time. At about 2.17 in the morning, the owner of the black SUV which the suspect was driving called to report the SUV stolen to the police department and she was later interviewed. The suspect's father and mother have both been notified of their son's death. The suspect, Mr. Lopez, had twice been convicted on four separate counts of felony discharge of a firearm in 2019. Two of those were second degree felonies with prison terms of one to 15 years. Two of those were third degree felonies with prison terms of zero to five years. He was paroled before the end of 2020 and rearrested again in early 2021 for violating his parole. He was again paroled before the end of 2021 and he was again on parole at the time of this incident. It is the policy of the Ogden City Police Department that officers activate their body-worn cameras during all police encounters. There is both dash cam video, excuse me, video and body-worn camera video from this incident. It's the policy of the Ogden City Police Department that all officers involved in uses of deadly force are investigated by the Weber County Attorney's Officer Critical Incident Investigation Team. That team responded to the scene of the shooting that night and took over the investigation. The body-worn camera footage, dash cam footage, and all other, excuse me, all other evidence has been turned over to the Weber County investigators. We will, can, we will in consultation with the Weber County Attorney and their investigative team expedite the release of the body worn camera footage. Only one officer fired their weapon and that officer has been placed on paid administrative leave. There's a total of nine Ogden City Police officers on administrative leave for having been involved in shootings at this point in time. We are utilizing officers from specialty assignments to include school resource officers and overtime shifts to backfill staffing needs. The Ogden Police Department has a policy on minimum manning and staffing for patrol shifts. Regardless of these types of events or any others, patrol squads are always staffed to ensure adequate police service for the city of Ogden. I'm concerned about the number of criminals convicted in violent felonies being released from prison and supervised in our community. The efforts of the 2015 Justice Reinvestment Initiative Act to reduce incarcerated persons puts police officers, deputies, agents, and all law enforcement in danger far too often. It isn't a new story, it's one we've heard many times regarding injury and death to officers and civilians repeatedly, and I fear that we're, as Utahns, we're becoming numb to the problem and its repetitive nature. I've been a police officer in Ogden for more than 30 years, and I can absolutely tell you to the level of threat to officers from physical attacks and assaults, including those with weapons, is dramatically higher than it was 15 or 20 years ago. Officers growing weary of arresting violent armed suspects only to see them committing violent acts, in many cases, in less than a few months in the community. The officers find themselves being put in harm's way to rearrest someone that they took great risk to arrest just a few months before. 
Um, as I mentioned, the body-worn camera will be released as soon as we can expedite that through the investigators, and there's quite a period of significant amount of redaction that has to take place for us to reduce this body-worn camera footage and that um, from the prior officer-involved shooting incident. Any questions from anyone? Responding to this, the most recent one, when you're already stretched thin, I mean, how does that kind of just take its toll on the police department? Yeah, I think it takes a toll in many ways, to be honest with you. I mean, it's a, it's a difficult, stressful career. Um, the officers in our department are already under quite a bit of stress, just knowing that eight of them were involved in a shooting. One was seriously injured, still dealing with a very serious injury from that previous shooting. Um, and the efforts, which were extensive efforts that were taken by Deputy Chief Subi and, and, and others to see that officer was being cared for. Um, now you compile that with another shooting. And so I think maybe the strain in the anxiety, fear, and stress is, is as real as anything else. The real staffing issues, we don't have a problem with that. I've, I get um, so much support from my law enforcement partners across the state. If we ever were at a point where we didn't feel like we could adequately staff any shifts, we would have deputies, troopers, anybody else from any number of agencies here filling those shifts. But we put a lot of time and effort into taking care of our officers. We do such a better job in dealing with officer wellness issues now than we have in the past. And we have poured a significant amount of peer support and wellness and counseling and critical incident debriefs into both of these incidents over the past week. And that's going to go on for, for weeks and months to come. Is violent crime increasing here in Oregon? It actually isn't. Um, violent crime's been steady. And crime overall, we just actually um, were able to pull a stat recently where um, part one crime, which um, was considered the most serious crimes, um, reduced over 51% between 2006 and 2022 in Ogden. So we've seen a drastic reduction in crime overall, which even leads to my concern that we're seeing this larger um, proportion of criminals who are trying to be rehabilitated in our community rather than in a place where they're safe um, and where our community is safe to uh, have to worry about the violent acts that they've committed and may commit again. Was the suspect uh, allowed to have a firearm and if so, where is it, or if not, where is it? Um, that'll be part of, when we do one of these investigations where the Weber County Attorney's um, incident team takes over, they took over the entire investigation. They will take, they will investigate all the way back to the initial domestic violence call through to its end. So I don't know where he got the gun. He was not allowed. He was a felon and he was already convicted felon on four counts and on parole. So he was absolutely illegally in possession of that firearm. I know you said violent crime hasn't increased, but has there been an increase in officer involved shootings in Ogden? Yes, there has. And I think uh, across the state as well, those numbers would probably bear out to be true. I don't think this is a phenomenon we're experiencing. Some of the other incidents I talked about with injury and um, critical and sometimes deadly injuries to officers in other parts of the state have come after dealing with a suspect who'd been previously arrested for a violent felony, been paroled in a short period of time and was back out on the streets and they were trying to arrest that suspect again. What can you share about training, preparing for what you, your officers are facing in the street knowing that they're rearresting some of these very violent suspects? Yeah, it just puts the, uh, the priority of training so much higher um, it's always been a high critical part of what we do, and it's difficult to make time for all of the training that's required with all the other things we do. But I, I mentioned in my last press conference about the previous shooting that I was so proud of the work that our training bureau has done. Uh, we're one of the few states in, the st in, excuse me, one of the few cities in the state of Utah that has what's called a Vertra, which is a 360-degree immersive trainer that's a real-world interactive trainer. We use that along with um, what are called SIMS rounds to do live fire with um, kind of paint gun type rounds and to put those officers in real life situations but in a controlled training environment to try and help them be able to better react when it's really lives of citizens and officers are online and I think these last two shootings have been very indicative of, of how well that program has worked. Our officers have um, from what we've seen so far done a very good job. We're, we're very happy no one else was injured. Very happy none of our officers were injured. It's very unfortunate that um, a mother and father lost their son. It's, it's not a good thing for our community in any way, but the training really is a big part of, I think, why um, we've had the outcomes we have. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. There's an amazing event with the police department and kids from all over Weber County just down the street in 
less than an hour from now at the Children's Treehouse Museum. So you're already here. Wouldn't hurt you to stop in and see all the good stuff going on. So thank you.